Now we could try and figure that out by asking him questions and then trying to figure out if he's lying or not, or we could go directly to the source. We can measure objectively, is that information stored in the brain or not? At the University of Washington in Seattle, Dr. Larry Farwell has developed a revolutionary technique called brain fingerprinting. It could dispense with lying altogether. With the help of one of his students, we decided to put it to the test. My name is Eva, and I've gone to school here for four years, and today, Dr. Farwell, I'm going to set you a challenge. Brain fingerprinting examines our memory for telltale signs that we've been somewhere or done something, so it doesn't matter what we say about it. We're going to go to four different locations, and I'm going to dance at one of them. We'll see if Dr. Farwell can really find out where I was dancing. How's he going to know? In brain fingerprinting, it doesn't really matter what a person believes. He may believe his own lies, but he still is going to have the record of that crime stored in his brain if he committed it, or not if not. This is the Sylvan Grove Theater. It's one of my favorite places on campus, but it's not where I'm going to dance today. Not here. All right, here it goes. Okay, Dr. Farwell, I've always wanted to do that, but can you tell me where I am? There are sensors in this headband that will measure your brain responses. At Farwell's lab, Eva is connected to the computer with a headband that will monitor her brain waves. Okay, Eva, you'll see several different phrases and words flashing on the screen. To discover where she danced, Eva is prompted with details of her day's activities. We know that you went up the stairs, that you sat on the quad bench, that you took an escalator, and that you walked on the Burke Gilman Trail. Eva's brain will automatically respond to things she recognizes, and it's that response that will give her true memories away. When we see something that we recognize as significant, the brain says, aha. Well, that aha results in a particular pattern of brain activity that we can measure and analyze using a computer. Now, I don't want you to in any way indicate when the place that you danced comes up, but your brain is going to indicate that. You'll get a response that indicates you recognize it. Ready to begin? When Eva sees the place she danced, her brain should give an involuntary response that matches her reaction to the places Farwell knows she's been. And there's nothing she can do about it. Whether you're an honest person or not, whether you want to or not, whether it's incriminating or not, you'll get that response. Some people can commit a crime with no remorse at all, but they still know what happened, and we can detect that knowledge. OK, Eva, we have the results. We can clearly see from your brain waves here that the place that you danced was not the Rose Garden, was not the parking lot, was not the outdoor theater, oh it was the Red Square. We can clearly see that from what we see on this screen. The top line here is the things that we knew you knew. You clearly get a recognition response. The bottom line is the things that were irrelevant. You don't get that response. But the blue line, that's the red square. Clearly, you got that recognition wow. response. Wow. That's amazing. That's really phenomenal. And I tried in my head to, to trick you, but obviously. Well, the, the brain never lies. I mean, that information stored in your brain, we can detect that. Wow. If Farwell is right, we are stepping into a world where we cannot lie, where we come to rely on technology instead of trust. Technology is always a double-edged sword. That said, what we do with technology is to bring out the truth. And my perception on that is the truth will set you free. Whether it's technology or spotting the signs, telling tales is getting harder.